Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. What's up? Welcome to the second video in these uh, 3D tutorial. Now the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have this page open, learnopengl.com, go in here to transformations, and go in to read about vectors. Alright, what I'm going to give you is just a quick little, uh, what do you call it, a quick little view or a preview of what maths you need to know and it's not too complicated actually so you don't have to worry too much if you don't understand all of this right now I bet you will as we go on and uh, actually use these in practice right so I'm not a hundred 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 percent sure about all this but I read linear algebra I've been working with vectors so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, basically a vector is a direction with a size right a, a like how fast something is going in what direction all right, that means it doesn't have to have an origin, but it has a kind of a magnitude and a direction. That's the basic definition. Now, the way you write vectors on paper, and here is just a either a bold letter or a letter with a line above. Now, you'll see a, a letter with a kind of a roof thing above. Now, that's a unit vector, and we'll talk about that soon. But for now, there are three-dimensional vectors, two-dimensional vectors like you see here. This is a three-dimensional vector. This is written in a kind of a column format right it's it's in one column right here you can write it like this as well uh, but we write it like this for reasons you'll learn in a little bit we have to multiply them with matrices and stuff but that's why you write them like this now anyway an open GL, uh, or, or whatever the, the open GL or something DirectX, whatever you have uh, libraries that help you with these they're like three floats in an array right so that's basically what it is or for 2d vectors they're two floats uh, or integers or whatever we usually use floats as you can see here there are different types of vectors you see a vector going this way a vector going that way this the first float here or the integer in this case is the x value and this is the y value so it's going three in the x value right and and two in the y direction this is going three in the negative x direction and zero in y so it's not going up or down see that's how you kind of write uh, vectors and in 3d there would be a z value here as well and that would be out and or into the screen so there you go that's basically a vector it's nothing too complicated um, three values and whatever now there are different operations you can do one thing I want to just start off by saying is scalar that word right there is not as complicated as it sounds it's nothing scary it's, scalar means a value a single value right it can be a 1.0, 2.5, whatever, as long as it's a single value like this, an x value, see? It can be whatever. Now, scalar vector operations means that a vector is added or subtracted by a scalar value, just a single value, not by another vector. So the way you do it for addition, if you want to say x was 5, we would be adding 5 to each one of the vector attributes. So this would be uh, 6, this would be whatever, 6, 7, and so on and so on quick math right easy so what you can do is you can add and subtract now multiplication is a little more complicated it's a whole different thing before I get there I'm just going to talk about vector negation so vector negation means that every value in the vector becomes negative now what you actually do when you subtract a vector from another one is you negate one of them and then you add them so I'm just going to show you that you can go ahead and read here how you add vectors together or with scalar values this is this is about vectors being added to each other all you do is you take two vectors you add them just right across so the first value with the first value and so on and you get a new vector like you can see here in the picture this is what actually happens you have a vector here or a vector here V and a vector K you add them and you kinda get the the addition of those just like that and this is this is good for kinda calculating forces and stuff there's a force coming towards you and there's a force that way and that way you add them together and you get the resulting vector which way the object actually moves so we'll be getting into that later as well but there you go addition and subtraction um, negation this is what I was talking about the subtraction is done by you negate the k vector you kind of completely make it negative and then you add them together and then you get a new vector and the way that is that it, in this case we negated the k vector let's see w minus v so imagine the v vector c minus v we negate it so we'll make this go in the other way down like this and then we'll add whoops what did i just do okay so we'll add w with this negated v vector imagine it going down here 
you'll get kind of a kind of a vector like this boom and the because they moved it here because you can move a vector wherever you want as long as it has the same magnitude and direction you can move it anywhere in this field so we, they just moved that up here but imagine it being here from the origin it'll be look like this something like that don't worry too much about that um, a vector's length is really important because sometimes we use it for like you know how how I mean the the magnitude of the vector like this the force is the actual force in a float and the length of a vector comes out as a scalar value so one single value it will be like 10 or 12 or whatever and the way you get it is using the Pythagoras theorem so you take the X and the Y you take X power uh, to the power of 2 or whatever and then y to the power of 2 and then you take the square root of that and you get the length of the vector so that's the way you do it same way for 3d mind you you just have the z value here as well I think yes should be it um, nevertheless even if I'm wrong on that one uh, there is a function for calculating length so don't worry about that there's a function all of this is kind of in a library called GLM which we'll talk about so don't worry too much you'll just write length of a vector and then you'll get it as a value uh, but yeah that's it and then there is something called a unit vector now that's what I said earlier a unit vector is basically any kind of vector we'll take this V vector for example now if you want this vector to just represent a direction not a magnitude just a direction then that will become a unit vector and what we do then is we divide it with its own length and that will give us a value from 1 to 0 on or minus 1 to 1 I think from uh, for the X and for the Y so it would be like this kind of it would just represent the direction now I know that's a little confusing but normalizing a vector is very very normal because you only want that haha no pun intended by the way but that is very very normal just because it is uh, it's like you just want the direction of something now imagine your character is moving in a certain way direction with a certain speed right if you wanna hmm, let me see how I'm gonna I'm gonna put this imagine I'll say like this say, say that we have a vector for which way the character is moving we want to normalize that vector so we get it between minus 1 and 1 on both so then we'll just have a direction and we have a constant value for speed we have like 20 kilometers an hour right you want to move that character in a certain direction with 20 kilometers an hour so imagine if that vector was longer than 1 we would like imagine it going in the x value for 2 then we would move that character to the right by 40 kilometers an hour we don't want to do that we want just we want the max speed to be 20 right so if we just calculate the direction we normalize that vector we'll get it from 0 to 1 here so it'll be 1 going to the right and then we'll say that okay that character is moving completely to the right 20 kilometers an hour on the other hand if we had it 0 0.5 in the y 0 0.5 in the x direction we would get the character moving uh, in a diagonal direction right 10 kilometers an hour up 10 kilometers an hour to the right so but that will make more sense later as well I made a video on that uh, for the directional shooting in uh, in SFML so if you're a little confused you can go watch that but that's basically why we normalize vectors when you just want the direction imagine a light coming in to the surface you don't want the kind of magnitude you calculate a new vector it's kind of the size of it is irrelevant you just want the direction then you normalize it and then you'll just get the direction out of that so it doesn't scale kind of wrong in a wrong way uh, but yeah like I said we'll see that later uh, there is two very important points that I want to go through that's the dot product and the cross product so you might have noticed that we never took up multiplication up here that's because this is the vector multiplication so to speak the cross product and the uh, dot product the, they're both multiplications kind of but it's just that they give you a different value now the dot product is also call, called the scalar product now guess why because you get one value back you multiply two vectors quote unquote multiply them and you get back a value you don't get a, va a resulting vector you get a resulting just one value of something and that value is a multiplication of the length of both the vectors multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them now that sounds all like voodoo all that kind of stuff whatever crazy shit I don't want to learn this anymore don't don't think like that just 
don't worry too much. Just remember that this is the way the dot product is calculated. Now the dot product is important and the computer will do it for you. There's a function for the dot product. Now mostly it is like I just said that light directions and stuff, right? When you want to calculate the light on a certain fragment or a certain pixel, um, you don't care about the length of the light. You just care about the direction it's pointing to. And the normal, for example, which is a perpendicular vector to the surface. So it's pointing right up from a surface. Imagine your table and there's a little little arrow pointing right up 90 degrees from the table. That is the normal of the table. Now that is used to calculate the light's direction and then the angle between the light direction and the normal of the table will be, you know, the angle between them. So then we normalize both those vectors so they're both one. We can take away these two the ones here because they don't, they're irrelevant. So what we get is when we multiply the light vector, for example, and the normal of the table, we'll just get the cosine of the angle between them. And then you can do the arc cosine and get the actual angle between them and use that value. Or well, you won't do arc cosine. You'll just use the cosine value because it's between minus one and one. But then you'll get kind of a value you can use to calculate how strong that pixel will be. We'll see that later, all right? We'll see that. Don't worry. We'll see all about that later. Um, but yeah, that is a dot product. Basically the angle between them. You can think of it as that. Now the cross product is really important as well. Imagine again your table with these two vectors. This is, these are the corners of your tables, right? The edges. You want to calculate the normal of the table. You'll take the cross product of these two vectors, V and K, or, or just, well, think of this blue one as K instead of the green one. Whatever, V and this blue one you'll get k. Boom. So what the cross product does is instead of give you one value back, for example here, the scalar product, see this is a calculation of the scalar product, gives you a value, it'll give you a whole new vector back. Now I don't remember this calculation completely, but this is how it works for 2D vectors, or 3D vectors, sorry. Uh, go ahead and try this on paper if you want, but there is a function in OpenGL to help you do this. Um, but yeah, there you go. So that it, it gives you a new vector that is perpendicular to both of the vectors you're calculating this cross product with, right? So the product is always perpendicular to both the vectors. And that is really helpful to calculate the normal of triangles, normal of stuff, and whatever directions you might need. So remember the cross product and dot product. Now matrices I'll, I'll cover in another video. It's not really too much to cover. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about them anyway. Uh, go ahead and read if you want. Like I said, on this page, it's really, really good. Uh, and I'm sorry for the little hasty, not too, not too good tutorial on vectors. I just want you to know about them or what you can do with them a little bit as we go into programming because I want to just focus on the programming. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Take care, keep learning, and I'll see you guys in the next one, right? Bye-bye.